Dark Knight 7 again, once again, with some more new loot. Let's really start off with the newest ones of the bunch, the Gundam Thunderbolt kits. Apparently from a quite popular manga at the moment, the Gundam Thunderbolt manga, obviously. And the one thing I immediately liked about this when I looked at the box is, it's not... Well, Bandai pretty much by doing this confirmed that this is not a part of the official canon. Because this says high grade Gundam Thunderbolt rather than high grade Universal Century. And of course trying to fit these into the official canon, well that would have been quite a stretch. More about the box that I really like is that they've got this Master Grade box actually going on. Gundam Thunderbolt on the side and I gotta say I really immediately liked the way they looked. And when we open the box, things get only better. First thing you do when you open it up, look at that sticker sheet. I mean, that is significantly more than some of the earlier Master Grades we got, and that is still on par with what we usually get from Master Grades. So, immediately that is a big win in my book. And look at all these runners we're getting. Seriously, with the box, with the stickers, the second I opened this box, it felt like I was opening up a Master Grade box. But more, and what helps it even more is, we're getting Monster Grade Beam Savers. Great! And then there is a manual, and underneath the manual is still something else. First of all, the manual... It, it does seem that the, the manuals are a little bit different, because these arrows, I don't think they're present in um, the other manual, so that's something new they're doing to apparently make things more clear in case you didn't realize that it was going from left to right. Then again, maybe for the Japanese people it is kind of useful because they are used to uh, reading from right to left, so maybe that's why they did that. But as you can see, this is, well, quite a big manual for just a high grade. And like I said, there's still something more in there. Little manga. Like I said, a very little manga thing. And to compare it to a normal manga, let's take one from underneath the camera. We have Fairy Tale here. And yes, it's only a little manga, but still, it's nice that we get one. And even has the usual dust cover. We get some mechanical detail on the Gundam itself. And seems to be a little bit of a story. Ah, there we have. The Zaku with that thing. Oh, the gym we're immediately getting. And there we have um, that one dude's, that one guy's Zaku that everyone mistakes for Johnny Ryden. Ribengu, Ribengu, Dead Doll. Living Dead. Oh no, that was the name of the squadron. Are we getting a little manga here? So, the first thing we open up, and it's already great. Putting that back in there, and I gotta say, I think this is gonna be a really fun build. Putting that to the side. Next up, we have the Zaku and the big gun. In case you didn't quite know that that's a big gun, that is a humongous gun. And, well, I really wonder how that gun is gonna look straight, because it looks like, well, uh, I'm not too sold on it yet. Not as much as I'm sold on the Gundam or the gym, at least. When we look at the runners, I'm not sure if it's promising or not. It looks like we're getting a nice amount of parts, but it also looks like they are in some very similar colors. So, not too sure what to think about that. The Zaku itself, though, looks really good. It's really just like a normal Zaku, but upgraded. And these runners just keep on coming and look at that red runner there that is also fantastic those are the uh the scopes for the gun i gotta say they really went all out with these machines and this is yes finally we've gotten to the final runner they just kept on coming and we have the manual here and there's still little something in our QR code 
And then underneath here, we have the manual for the big gun. This is literally the only kit I can think of that comes with two whole manuals. One for the machine itself, and then we still need another one for his accessory. And just with the Gundam, we're getting a lot of marching stickers, though they are hidden behind the plethora of normal stickers we're getting. Maybe a little bit unfortunate, but, well, yeah, I think that when you look at all the colors, it is pretty understandable. And finally, of course, the one I was looking forward to the most, the souped up gym. And as you're probably expecting, I couldn't help but start building this one the second I got it. I gotta say, I am mightily impressed. Though, didn't actually come with those beams ever, but I do really like that they actually fit in there. Perfect grade beam savers, they are an absolute fit. Well, not really absolute, but the most grade beam savers do fit in perfectly in the upgraded beam spray gun, surprisingly enough. And like I said, really like this model. They did really well with the molding. Color separation is very good. I gotta say the nice detail all over. Really, really can't wait till I finish this guy, and I'll probably review it at around uh, Thursday or Friday. Let's put this to the side, and oh yeah, very important message here at the bottom. Only one gym is included. You don't actually get an entire army in a small box, in case you thought that you were getting an entire fleet. Then we also have some of the other new high grades here. The F-91 Gundam F-91. This is the Harrison Ford. No, Harrison... Ah, oh, Harrison Ford. Um, the Harrison Madden version. And the one thing I was afraid of is that it is an exact recast of the normal F-91 Gundam F-91. Which means that... The F91 is a very nice machine, nothing too much to say about it, you get everything you need, usual runners, get a very nice shield, we get the clear beams, and yada yada, whatever, we get a manual, nothing too much to say about this, but the one thing you'll see, the big difference between the normal F91 and Harrison's F91 is the nice extra yellow markings. And when we look at the parts that would have those yellow markings, you're going to be very disappointed because there is no trace of those markings on the actual parts. So that means that if you want to make it completely accurate, you're gonna have to use all of those stickers, there's no getting around it, and you can't even paint it. I was pretty pissed off when they pulled this with the cluster Gundam, but then again, it's an older model, and well, you gotta give those older kids some leniency when it comes to unforgivable things today. But for a modern day kit to just pull a stunt like that, so carelessly, this is really come on why not give us an extra just remold it and just include a little panel in there it's not hard to do and it's going to be a big help for the people who like to paint their model kits really i can't believe they actually pulled that stunt they did with the cluster gundam that was like 20 years ago on a modern day kit the f91 shame on you, Bandai. Shame on you. Then moving on to something a little bit more happy. Gumpla Builders. The Wing Gundam Fenice. Piloted by Riccardo Fellini. His own custom made the mobile suit. Well, I guess mobile suit wouldn't be technically correct. This would... Yeah, this isn't a mobile suit, guys. It's not a mobile suit. It's a Gumpla. There's a big difference. Mobile suits are 80 meters big. This is... Um, this is 144 skill. Are these like 12, 12 centimeters or something? So yeah, big, big difference. But then again, it's a very nice machine. It's only a little bit sad that the wings are only on one side. 
And I'll put that away, and as will I do with my accent. Going on to older kits that got restocked this month. Starting off big with the F90 ADS type. And man, does this come with a lot of stuff. It comes with a shit ton. I mean, I, I read this and I thought ADS in one model kit, but then again, 2,500 yen is monstrously expensive for a kit of that time. And when we open it up, well, what do we have here? <clears throat> Designer Kunyu Okawara. He has made another design newly for us. Aww, thanks Kunyo. And, point, 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 Bandai has just embodied his draft in plastic models. We did every technique we could do, such as not giving us any waist articulation. Thanks a lot. Um, now his arts are coming true and moving. Well, if you decide to move it, that is. Full color mold, snap kit. When you open the box, you know another great Gundam from Bandai. We know what? Yes, I would have agreed with this if we'd gotten waist articulation. And also, if this kit had a little bit more color separation. Um, essentially... Well, it's a very nice base model, but unfortunately they drop the ball a little bit on the accessories. Because even though they look nice, I mean, the base model is absolutely fantastic. And when we just look at the model, when we just look at all of this, this is all looking really good. But then, when we take other things into account, like this bazooka should be grey. Um, I think the missiles, yep, yeah, the missiles on the right there are supposed to be white, and I really hate painting white, and a lot of these green parts should be slightly silvery. But then again, having a dark green isn't too bad of a mistake. I mean, when you have a militaristic machine, whether it's dark green or a gunmetal or silvery metal, that's not the worst thing ever. So overall, I'm really, really, really looking forward to building this machine. and. Absolutely, I'm gonna build this right after I built the three Thunderbolt models. And also, the biggest pro of this machine is it's actually completely compatible with the Cluster Gundam. So that thing's finally gonna get some redeeming qualities other than the bazookas. Because, uh, let's see, what was it stated? I don't think, or was it in the manual? Um, Because apparently, some of the accessories actually clip onto that yeah, it's not shown on the box, but some of the accessories, like the Gatling gun here, which I can't immediately find, um, click onto this interesting backpack design. So, that's what that was for. Then, more F90s. Here we have the P type, the plunger, which is essentially the F90 equipped for atmospheric re entry. Second one, essentially the same. We're just getting some extra accessories and a lot of stickers. That is, a, whoa, is that, are all of those marking stickers? Or, no, that's just, ah. Damn, they fool us. For a second I thought that that was a giant sheet of marking stickers behind that. But, turns out that that's just the backdrop of the normal stickers. And then we get some springs, so this is looking very good. And this is just uh, the same runner that was in that box in the normal F90. Other than that, pretty nice looking. And that reminds me that I should really finish the game. It's really a nice game too, um, on which these machines are based. Now I'm suddenly wondering, which came first, the game or these model kits? Then we have the VSBR type. Once again, the same thing, just a few extra accessories. And well, this runner immediately spells doom. Blue weapons, well, if we have to, I guess it's better than white or baby blue or pink. Let's 
So I think that VSBR type, based on the blue weapons, might be my least favorite of the bunch. But then again, that shield might make it look pretty badass. But what I think is gonna be one of my favorites, the F92. The long range type. And I think that cannon says it all. Opening it up, we want to have... Actually, I think this is largely the same? No, 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 wait, this looks different. This is the same runner because we're getting uh, the same back but in pure red. So if you want to change them around a little bit, there you go. And then here we have the giant cannon. The main event of the machine, and that's gonna look really, really nice. And as always, a lot of stickers. But yeah, we're kind of getting used to that. Actually, coming to think of it, they actually come with a lot of normal stickers, but none of the F90s come with clear marking stickers. I didn't catch on to that, coming to think of it. Yeah, they're not here. Hmm, how bizarre. That's actually kind of surprising, because... Well, they weren't the greatest, and some of them were obviously a bit too big and stuff, but it was nice to get the option, and they gave kind of a nice retro feel to them. But then again, I guess we can kind of see the evolution towards the Jeep Gundam, and the Gundam Wing, and the Gundam X kits. When the molding is getting better, uh, we're getting a few more parts, but we're also losing the marking stickers. Which, yeah, quite literally, in the next step, the Victory Gundams didn't include them either. How bizarre. Unfortunately, but, well, you win some and you lose some. And that means that, oh, well, uh, on a final note, that means that with all of these, I finally have all the kits necessary to make the Hardy Gun Night Raid. Well, almost. Because when I first looked at this, I thought, whoa, that's a really nice scratch built machine. But actually, all these parts are from the F90s. We have the backpack of the plunger, and the big gun of the F90 2. These uh, sensors are all from the F90 2. The only thing is, I haven't been able to locate on any of the machines are the sensors on his head, the thing on, his, uh, on the left of his torso. And then the shield, which kind of looks like a modified hardy gun shield. I'm not sure, but I don't think it was included with any of the models. But I really wonder if that is actually scratch built or if it's from another kit or maybe I just overlooked something. Oh well, putting that aside, now we're gonna go back to some more modern kits. Other restocks I got this month, the Blue Destiny Unit 1 from the apparently very popular, and also very good, Sega Saturn game. A system almost nobody bought, and apparently a lot of people just don't like. In short, a very underrated system, which is why I decided to buy one yesterday. Yeah, it's underrated. I mean, come on, it's something that's underrated, I gotta buy it. I kind of have a knack for liking underrated things. Gundam X the gym, and apparently now the Sega Saturn. And yeah, gotta say marketing might have played a little part of it. And so far this machine is looking pretty damn badass. And of course I'm so gonna use the red one, obviously. Because red fighters look way more badass than blue or green. Also bought Blue Destiny Unit 2, but apparently for some reason, if I decided not, well, if I decided to keep Blue Destiny Unit 2 in my private in my private warehouse at HLJ, I saved not five, not ten, but thirty euros in shipping for one extra box. So yeah, unfortunately, Unit 2 had to wait. Then, the Gundam X, the normal one. Now I finally have all the 144 scale Gundam X kits in my possession, which actually reminds me that I haven't done an unboxing video of the G Falcon yet. And look at those sparkly stickers. 
They're so sparkly and spacey and moony. And other than that, well, it's just overall a very nice model. Already have the egg divider, so I'm pre I pretty much know what is in store for me. Under that satellite system, which looks really nice and shiny. Uh, is the moon out yet? Then the final restocked high grade Universal Century I got, the Bow. This is the production version, which means that it doesn't come with that nice marking that Glamis version comes with, but gotta say, this is a very intriguing model. It's one of those machines I've been wanting to get for a long, long time. And look at this, three mono eyes depending on where you want it to look, instead of just giving us a black normal sticker with one mono eye. But then again, like this, you always have it the correct way. And there's a marking sticker that way. What marking sticker does the Bau use? I want to know what that's, what's in there. Don't tell me it actually comes with the same marking as Glammy's one comes with. That can't be. Do we get a Zeon? Get out. I, okay, I have to know what's in there. You gotta know what's in there. Right, come on. Where's my nut? Whoops. Gonna grab the knife and what is in there? I didn't think that the normal bow came with any marking sticker, so we're getting. We do! We get Glemmy's marking with the normal bow. Right after I said we didn't get the marking. Well, in case you want Glemmy to pilot a normal bow. We do get it. That's, well, nice, I guess. Unexpected. I honestly didn't expect them to include that. But one thing I'm also looking forward to is seeing how this transformation goes on, because apparently no part swapping is necessary. And I think that the transformation mechanism for this machine was partly derived of the Zeta Gundam. Kind of um, because... Apparently also, yeah, because apparently a lot of the engineers who worked on the Zeta Gundam kind of went to Axis. And then... A big one, the Victory 2 Gundam. Kind of hard to fit in screen now with all these boxes next to me. And it's not just a high grade, hyper full action, high grade X. And honestly, I have no idea what that means. Because as far as I know, it's just a normal high grade. And don't believe the wings of flight, they are a trap. They're not included. Then what would make this model kit a high grade X? Well, we have normal runner, more normal runners, marking stickers which, well, wouldn't really make it a high-grade X. Um, no more parts. Oops. Another normal runner. Another normal runner. And yet, another normal runner. And a manual. Yeah, I'm... I really don't see why this would be classified as a high-grade X. It just looks like a like any other high grade. I mean, I get the feeling that at the time of Victory Gundam, the designers at Bandai had a lot of fun coming up with new grades that meant absolutely nothing. You know, like uh, the term high quality. So, just gonna put this high grade X away. I'm if anyone has any clue why this would be considered an X, please enlighten me and probably anyone else who is watching this, because, you know, hyper full action. As far as I can tell, this is just like any other model. 
but don't get me wrong because I'm being slightly sarcastic towards this model kit. I really think that this is going to be a great model, even though the wings of flight aren't included. It's a 160 scale victory Gundam, which can fully transform. And from what I've seen, looks pretty good, actually. If I can get it in screen. See, pretty nice looking. The chest might be a little bit too big. Who knows, I might just have to display it in its transform mode, because I... Yeah, when you look at the transform parts, those actually look great. So it would be funny if the mobile suit form wasn't nearly as great as the... Well, the three different transformations. But then, hey, if it does look better in transform mode, you're getting three models instead of just one. And after the biggest model of this new loot video, here is the smallest one, the Zeta Plus BB Senshi. And when we open it up, well, it's exactly what you'd expect an SD to be. You get a fair amount of secrets and a good thing. Commend them on giving us both eye uh, details. We get the one with normal eyes and then we get, well, normal SD eyes and then we get uh, normal mobile suit eyes. So you can either make it as a BB Senshi or a normal SD. We have, oh, there we have little spring there because of course his smart gun is spring-loaded and will fire these tiny little missiles. It's kind of odd that such a large amount of the parts are in blue, while whereas actually only a handful of parts on the actual mobile suit are blue. Bottom of the feet, side of the head, and then these vents are supposed to be white. That's probably just um, an error of whoever drew that picture. So yeah. Only these should really be blue, and all the rest should be just gray or a slightly different gray, because these fuel pods are supposed to be like a gunmetal color. But the coolest thing about this model is you can make both the A1, the C1, um, the A2, the C1, and the A1. So maybe I'll buy a few more of them and I'll have all the types together. And for everyone wondering, um, the A1 is actually also supposed to be the same color as the C1, because the the only A1 monster that we got was Amro Race Custom A1, which was in those parade colors. All the other A1s are actually just the same color as the C1, the more you know. Then when we look at the manual, Oh yeah, one more unfortunate thing is it doesn't actually include the normal beam rifle that the A1 uses. We only get the beam smart gun that the C1 uses. But other than that, it's a very nifty little kit for an SD. And then one final item I got because it was on sale and was humongously discounted. A Hobby Japan issue. I figured it was like, I don't know, a dollar fifty or something. And they are usually pretty big magazines, and they do give you a lot of stuff to read and some interesting things to look at. Anyways, I think, uh, hey, Code Gears, I get you the Excel. Come in and think of it, I haven't seen that yet. Guess I really should try to check it out. That's like, uh, I can't um, really put my finger on Was that the OVA or was that a normal anime series? I think this was an OVA. Oh well, I'll check it out and ooh. Hmm, temple. Turn it around. Ah, uh, the Gundam Mark V. Oh yeah, if only they made a model kit of that. Actually, come to think of it, that might be a very good possibility. Since they are coming out with the Silver Bullet, and the Silver Bullet was the upgraded version of the Gundam Mark V. Fingers crossed. Let's see what else we got here. The gun... Ooh, model rate version 3.0. I think at this time this was still a new model kit. It's actually kind of thing. I forgot from when this was. Let's see... Um, August 2013. Hmm. Might be running behind a little bit. Pikachu! And with that, we're moving on. So, that's really all for this new loot video. I also got a, f uh, a couple of Gundam Marks. I also got a brown Gundam Mark for this time. Probably gonna try that one on Riccardo Fellini's Wing Gundam Finite. And other than that, well, 
Got a lot of the new stuff to build. Probably gonna burn through the new ones. The full armor Gundam, the Zaku 3, the F-91s, the Finiche. And then next up, it's gonna be either the ADS or the Blue Destiny. And then I'm just gonna go on with my usual schedule. But probably finish a few of the older ones. And then who knows? Well, leave a suggestion in the comments down below which one I should build first. I mean, the new ones, that's still quite a bit to pick which one I'll build after the gym. One final note regarding the review schedule for the coming weeks. Uh, this Saturday and next Tuesday, I will have um, two exams, so I'm probably gonna be uploading a little bit less. I mean, you might have noticed that already, that I'm not putting out videos at the rate I was a few weeks ago, but that is, of course, because... Well, unfortunately, I still have to study. Uh, if only we didn't have to do that thing. You know, studying on work. What good is it for? <laughs> but now, uh, seriously though, after that, once again, gonna have a lot of time to build, upload reviews, and play video games. Because yeah, I've been stocking up on those a lot. And that Sega Saturn wasn't a joke. I seriously ordered it, so look forward to that one. And, I don't know, maybe as for a, a gaming channel? Well, we're just uploading a little bit of gameplay footage. Um, I'm really considering it. Maybe I'll just use the dark magic of emulation. And in case anyone's wondering, emulation is actually legal if you own both the system and the video games. And you would be able to play it. For example, emulating a Japanese game is Illegal if you only own a Japanese game, but not a Japanese PlayStation. If you own a Japanese PlayStation and a Japanese game, then emulating is completely legal. And as far as uploading uh, video game footage to YouTube and getting in trouble over that, well, I'll have to look into that a little bit, because, well, who knows? I'm not really up to date on all that, but I knew it was a little bit of a scandal. But then again, I'd be uploading video game footage of older games and I think that the people who got into trouble, uh, was that Nintendo or was that the Bockle um, a couple of months ago? But those are a few, uh, those are the real problematic ones, um, like first party Nintendo stuff. And I think that also Sega is going a little bit butthurt, you know, the company that produces the system I'm now buying. But I think that's usually like uh, the first party problematic things. But then again, with Gundam, I think as long as there aren't any of the popular songs featured, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But I'm gonna stop talking now, I think this video has gone on for long enough. Uh, we'll discuss this in some later video, and I will see you all next time. Don't forget to leave suggestions and what you think about these models down below. I mean, give your opinions on these very interesting and very unique Gundam Thunderbolt models. Do you think that they're a bit too much of a cluster Gundam fuck? Or do they look awesome? Well, see you next time.